everyone in the YouTube world, it's Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that's not really discussed often, but I'm asked far too frequently for this to happen. And it's highly illegal and should never happen for any dealer. No one should be doing this. Renting out your dealer license. So now obviously having a YouTube channel, a lot of dealers are able to get in contact with me or a lot of Newcomers, a lot of people that want to get into the business are able to get in touch with me and I'm asked frequently to rent out my dealer license and without a flinch, I say no. That is absolutely never, ever going to be an option. And if you own a car dealership, it should never be an option for you. And here are all of the reasons why. Now, first of all, owning a car dealership, just like a driver's license, Having a dealer's license is a privilege, it is not a right, and the DMV is very specific in making sure you know that. You have the privilege of having a dealer, dealer's license, you have jumped through lots of hoops to get there, you pay lots of money yearly, annually, to have that dealer's license. Why give it away to somebody for a couple hundred bucks a month? Okay, so it costs me 10 grand easily, easily $10,000 in overhead to run my business every single month, every month. And I'm a small car dealership. So between overhead, electric, cable, internet, mortgage, interest, licensing costs, insurances, easily $10,000 a month it costs me to run my car dealership. Now there are people that wanna pay a few hundred a month or a couple hundred per car to rent a dealer's license. No freaking way. There is absolutely no reason you should ever be doing that. Why give up your liability and all the reasons I'm gonna tell you about for a matter of a couple hundred bucks a month? It's not worth the risk, it's not worth the loss. I rely, my entire life relies on my dealer license. It's important to me. My kids can go to gymnastics and soccer and there's food on the table and we have a, a warm house because of my dealer license and to je jeopardize it, on somebody else's laziness to want not want to get their own license or incapability of getting their own license is not nearly worth the risk of me losing my license. So here's an ad that I stumbled across. It's on Craigslist. A person asking to rent a dealer's license. Now, when I started my dealership in New Hampshire, I had partners. My father and my brother were both on our license. And I say our license because it was the three of us together. We were all on the license. We were all business owners registered with the state together under the same business, under the same entity. We all worked together. There's a huge difference from having a partnership with multiple people on your dealer's license, on your business, than there is renting your license out and giving access to some schmo that wants to just flip cars under your business. So I had to take a background check to get my dealer's license. I had to get fingerprinted by the FBI. I had to take a class, a dealer training class that I have to renew regularly. Like every few years, I have to take a dealer training class to make sure I know all the laws, all the rules, make sure I know what I'm selling, make sure I know how to sell it appropriately and legally. And if you're renting the license to somebody, you can't guarantee that they're going to follow the same rules that you are. Think about it this way. My dealer's license allows me access to auctions, car auctions, all over the country. I can go to California, I'm from New Hampshire, I can go to California and I have a card that allows me to get into the auction in California. Now I can buy a car in California, I can pay for the car in California and I can have it shipped home. I do it in Florida all the time. Now what happens if you rent your license to somebody and they go to Florida and they buy five cars and they take all five cars out and they don't pay for it? Are those cars gone? Well, yeah, probably. Who's stuck with the bill? You are. You're stuck with the bill. The auction's gonna take your money. The auction has access to your bank account. The auction has access to your dealer's license. They'll shut your dealer's license down. They'll ban you from their auction. All those things can happen on you if somebody else buys a car on your license and then doesn't pay. Now what happens if they're in the auction sabotaging cars? What happens if they're in the auction causing a problem for you? Do you really want to jeopardize your name, your business name, your dealer's license on someone that you don't know and you hope that they're doing the right thing for you for a matter of a couple hundred dollars per car? Let's talk about selling cars now. Now that dealer, that person under your dealer's license that has access to your dealer's license, has access to the auctions all over the country under your name, 
is selling those cars somewhere that's not at your dealership, that's not at your location. Where are they selling them? Now, in the state of New Hampshire, that car has to be sold at my dealership. I can't go up the street and sell it at a Walgreens or something. I have to sell it at my location that my license is under. So if that person is not selling it at your dealership, which if they're renting your license, they're not, they're selling it from home or who knows, God knows where, they're already breaking the rules, they're already breaking the law, and they're already jeopardizing your license by selling cars under your name, not at your location that's licensed to sell vehicles. While we're on the topic of how are they selling cars, where are they selling cars, how are they selling the cars, where are they listing these cars for sale? Are they curb stoning? Now curb stoning, if you don't know what curb stoning is, it used to happen a lot more in the 70s, 80s, 90s, pre-internet era, but it still happens. You might be driving down the side of the road, you might be driving down the road on the side of the road, you see a car for sale with a window sticker for sale. It might not be that person's car. I know lots of dealers that were getting into the business in the early 2000s that would go knock on doors for houses that had a great location and say, hey, can I sell a car in your front yard? I'll give you $100 a month or I'll give you $50 per car if you allow me to leave it in your front yard with a for sale sign. That's curb stoning, putting it out on the curb for people to drive by and see it and then you go sell it at their home. Now here's a problem with that. The buyer is buying a car that they think is owned by that residence. So when there's a problem, they could go back to that residence and say, hey, where you sold me this car. Now the resident of that home, hey, it wasn't me that sold the car, it was Joe, he rents this grassy spot from me. Well, where's Joe? I don't know, I don't know where Joe lives. Well, who sold it to you? Craig's Auto Sales. Well, Craig's Auto Sales is in New Hampshire, you're in Massachusetts, you're in Florida, you're in North Carolina, whatever. Why is Craig's Auto Sales in New Hampshire selling you a car? Craig's Auto Sales didn't sell the car. Joe sold the car. Wrong. Craig's Auto Sales sold that car. Doesn't matter who the salesman was. Craig's Auto Sales under your license is the one that sold that car. So now when Joe sold a car that has, it's faulty, a bad transmission, a rotted frame, a bad engine, whatever, guess who sold that car to Mr. Customer? Craig's Auto Sales. Not Joe. Joe is just the facilitator for Craig's Auto Sales. So Joe sold the car for Craig's Auto Sales off property for Craig's Auto Sales and it's Craig's Auto Sales that now has the liability. Guess who gets sued when there's a problem? Does Joe? No, Craig's Auto Sales gets sued. Craig's Auto Sales is on the hook for whatever car Joe sold. Now what happens if Joe didn't fill out the appropriate paperwork? I have so much documentation to CYA. Cover your butt. I have so much paperwork to cover my butt that way, if anything happens, now I follow the rules, I sell good cars, I know what's available, I know what I'm doing, and I clean them, and I recon them, and I fix what needs to be fixed, and then I sell a warranty on top of that, so I know what I'm selling is a good car, and I'm creating a good customer that's hopefully gonna return. Well, when Joe burns a bridge because he sold a car and sold a piece of junk, that customer is gonna be mad at Craig's Auto Sales and Craig's auto sales is gonna get a bad review on Facebook and Google and Yahoo and Yelp and whatever else there is. So it's on, it's on Craig's auto sales, it's on the hook for that customer's problem. Now when they take you to court, where's the paperwork? Who has all the paperwork? So Joe might have all the paperwork. Do you have all the paperwork? Joe's not gonna give you all the paperwork. Joe who's renting your license just cares about the cash. He sold the car, transaction over, move on to the next one. He's flipping cars. You're not in the business to be flipping cars. As a licensed car dealer, you have a responsibility to be a stand-up citizen in the industry, a stand-up person, and create goodness, create a better industry. When Joe's flipping cars under your license, in your name, that is not bettering our automotive industry. So you're actually hurting yourself several times over. Now you get to court. You're being sued because Joe sold a car under Craig's auto sales to Mr. Customer. The engine started knocking a week later because Joe put some Lucas in it. Or the transmission started slipping because he put some sawdust in it. Now the customer takes you to court. All right, Craig from Craig's auto sales, do you know this customer? No, I don't. I let Joe sell it under my light. You, you what? You let Joe sell it under your license at a location so you broke the law? Okay, not only do you lose your license, not only can you be arrested, but now you're being sued with no documentation. All right, show me the as-is paperwork. Oh, I don't have any as-is paperwork. Joe has the as-is paperwork. Where's Joe? I, I don't know. All right, so who has the title? Joe sold it over to Mr. Customer. 
Okay, now in New Hampshire, I have to do the title work. So I do the title work for you. So Joe sells the car to Mr. Customer. Then Joe brings me the title. Now I have to do the title work for them. So now I'm creating a whole other job for me. I'm already doing titles for my customers. Now I have to do titles for Joe's customers. And I have to collect the paperwork and hope at least it gives you the opportunity to check the paperwork and make sure you're doing it the right way. But still, you're on the hook for it. Okay, let's keep going. So now you've been sued by Mr. Customer because of Joe's lack of knowledge in the industry, ja Joe not telling the customer or disclosing any issues. You're on the hook. You paid out. You've already been banned from a dealer auction because Joe never paid the dealer auction for those cars he purchased. Now, let's talk about tax implications. I am not an accountant. I have my own accountant. I have my own CPA. I send it all off because I'm not a professional when it comes to taxes. I pay my taxes. I have my accountant do it tells me what to do, and they do it for me. It's easy. But what happens when Joe is not paying taxes? Let's say Joe sells 40 cars for you. Let's say Joe sells five cars a month. That's what, 50, that's 60 cars in a year. If Joe sells 60 cars in a year, where did that income go? That's claimed income under your business. It's not, Joe is not gonna claim it. Joe is collecting it in cash because he can't have it made out to Craig's Auto Sales because then I get paid. If Joe gets paid on a car, he has to get paid in cash. Now he's sliding money under the table. All right, he's hiding money. Who's hiding money? Yeah, Joe is, but who else is hiding money? Craig's auto sales would be. So now, Joe is selling cars for cash, not claiming them illegal on his end. But that income is not being claimed under your business either. Your business is selling those cars. Remember, Craig's auto sales sold those cars. So if Craig's auto sales sold those cars, those have to be claimed as income and expenses. You have a gross income, you have a net income, you have your expenses, you have your costs. All those things you have to get have to get taken into consideration when you're running a business. And if Joe's not paying his taxes, if Joe's not claiming the income, neither are you. It's your responsibility, it's your liability, and now you have tax liabilities. You're doing things illegally on the tax end as well. The list goes on and on and on, and I could keep going on reasons why, and I haven't given you one positive reason why you should do it. Is it worth a couple hundred bucks a month or some money per car to lend out your license and put all of your responsibility on somebody else that you don't really know? No way, no reason. There is absolutely no reason that's worth it. If you want the extra couple hundred bucks a month, hustle and sell one more car a month okay work an extra hour a day and you can sell that one car a month it's way easier to do it on your own than to rely on somebody else and I'm gonna say it this way do you want to jump in bed with somebody you don't know someone you don't know I don't care who it is do you want to get into business because you're now a business partner with somebody that you don't know that isn't responsible enough to get their own dealers license think about it if they could get their own dealers license they would have if they could they would and they haven't. Why haven't they? There's a reason. Is it laziness? Well, if it's laziness to not get your dealer's license, it's going to be laziest while running your business because they're running your business on the side. If it's lazy, if it's not laziness and they're incapable of doing it, they must have done something wrong in the past to not allow them to. Is it their credit score? If they have a low credit score, they are making payments on something which shows irresponsibility somewhere or shows a problem somewhere. So if there's a problem or irresponsibility, it's going to reflect on you in the future. Anyway, that's everything. Don't don't rent out your license, guys. It is illegal, and besides being illegal, there's way too much on the line. You don't want to lose everything you have, everything you've worked for, because some schmohawk decided he wants to rent your license and flip cars the easy way. Don't do it. Hey, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, do me a favor. Make sure to subscribe for more car dealer tips and tricks. And also, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up, because when you give me a thumbs up, it gets recommended to other people and it helps me grow my channel and I'm not giving out all this information for free for nothing. Help me out. Help me help you. Help me help you. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching everybody. Adios.